Perhaps a little fuller. Hmm? Oh, no, no, indeed. Look, uh, I've copied it from here. You see, this was printed in London only last year. You see the lapels here? Oh, yeah, Does yeah, it take the clothes of a gentleman to impress the governor's commission, Father? Oh, yes, Luke. Because you delude yourself, you're dealing with gentlemen. We have to go. Commissioners, judges, magistrates. Eh. You must believe You spit in their eye, Jason. And they'll spit right back. <laughs> Giving evidence before His Excellency's commissioners. It's a most important journey you are making, Mr. Fairbank. They'll protect their privileges if it means ripping the clothes from your back. That's the gentleman they are. Bye bye, Edward. Bye bye, Charlie. Good luck. Bye, Jesse. Bye, 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 April the 23rd, 1833. A helpless man is a man without dignity. I feel it acutely. But it has been ordained that I assert authority in a place so alien that my words and sentiments might as well be expressed in a foreign tongue. Today, I feel less helpless. I am to present a case for the squatters before a governor's committee. Lieutenant Elliot is a most agreeable companion. Try as I would, however, during the long and uncomfortable journey, I could not persuade him to deny the truth behind Luke's jibes. Not all men, he was kind enough to say, were motivated by my sense of high purpose. He revealed himself to be a man of influence, having the regard of officials in the highest places. Picture my surprise, dear Charlotte, and I confess more than a little relief, that when we arrived at Government House in Parramatta, I learned the governor of the colony himself could be counted amongst my son-in-law's close acquaintances. Indeed, they greeted each other as old friends. Edward, my boy! Well, I can't stop. And what's this stance about you getting married? Perfectly true, sir. Settle back and beyond. I have a small command, yes. Extraordinary. Some comely filly, I hope. Anyone I know? May I introduce you to her father, sir? Huh? Oh. Your servant, Excellency. Jason Furbeck. Furbeck? Furbeck? Do I know a squatter, Excellency? Ah. <laughs> well, I'd have known you'd be up to something. Going to knock some sense into that damn committee of mine, eh? Here, have a look at that. It's on there somewhere. Now, uh, see me before you go, Edward. It's a married, eh? That would be damned. <laughs> you ask what has angered me. This, sir. This. The squatters, you are first to ask. The squatters are a great public grievance. A grievance, if you please, upon which the colony grows rich. The view of a journalist, Mr. Furbeck. A view not confined to the pages of a rag, sir. What grievance can be held against men improving the land as we are, entirely at our own risk? We are left to bargain with our neighbours for the boundaries of our pastures. We are left to build roadways, drains, to protect our flocks, indeed our very families, against the ravages of blacks and runaways. 
We are at the mercy, sir, of your escaped villains, those hungry, brutalized men who have no respect for the sanctity of life or to possession. We are condemned as outlaws to live as they do, by wit and cunning. Is it some sort of grievance then, sir, that we demand no more than our right as free people in an English land to security and protection? Demand? All right, sir. There are opinions within these walls. Opinions that by taking livestock supplies and weapons beyond the official limits, you and your kind have created a refuge for the runaways you complain of where before there was none. Opinions, sir, that by occupying vast areas of land, you have aggravated the Aboriginal and turned him against us. You are doubtless aware, sir, that the border smoulders. We are on the brink of war. Our duty lies, gentlemen, with the preservation of the borders and the protection of those within them, not dispersing what little we have for a handful of opportunists squatting beyond the precincts of the law. They be blaming you squatters for the dry spell next. How was Father's speech? Very good. Too good. What do you mean? I didn't think he'd be so effective. Have you got that servant, girl? No, no, I haven't. There are plenty of unsuitable ones. It's a colony of rabble, high and low. I hear there's a prison for women here? You obviously haven't seen the place. No, I haven't. You'll need a permit. Yes. I'll have to get you one. I don't know what we'd do without you. You'd do better. You'd do better to look elsewhere, sir. Fine, outstanding gentleman like yourself. And they've all been used, if you understand my meaning. Not one of them fit to be the wife of the gentleman. I'm looking for a servant. Oh. You have a permit, you say? Yes. Connolly! Take this gentleman and lead him through. See, the place bears a semblance of industry, Mrs. Whittacombe. His Excellency the Governor comes from Sydney tomorrow. He may wish to visit us. Oh, yes, indeed, sir. And about the windows. Damn the windows. We're not made of money. They're the dregs, sir. Indifferent to any consideration. Dregs. His liberal Excellency would do well to note it. I'll give the lasses of the ballad, eh? Ballad? What ballad? The lass I adore, the lass for me, is the lass from the female sex. Who's that one? Uh, a viper. Wildcat. Cat, who is she? Cat. Little Miss Trouble. That's what. Be careful, sir. 
Viper's right. You saw the Surgeon General die. Well, she did it. Why is she so confined? Surgeon General's orders. Why? Yeah, to break her spirit. He wants her for himself. Doctor! Damn! Can he first? There's no law says he can't. How long has she been locked up like this? Six months. What's her name? Kate, sir. Kate Bell. Kate? Would you like to leave here, Kate? She's confined, sir. No one's to speak to her. Orders. Would you, Kate? The Surgeon General is no man to tangle with. Be silent, woman. She's mental and dangerous. I'll take her. She can't be released from my the commandant's authority. My permit says any of my choice. But not her. Captain! Does the commandant's orders override the lieutenant governor of the colony? Look here. If you lose her this chance, I'll get your eye. of this. Kate? You want to be away from this place, don't you? Well, you'll come and live with my father. You'll walk on grass under the deep, deep blue of sky. Hear the rustle of trees and the cry of lambs. You know the scent of blossom. How the river sounds. There's no one will harm you, Kate. I promise. My father, Luke, we'll all love you. And love will make you whole again.
yourself, not having the belly to say no. How long has she been here? Yeah. What did she do? Because they never tell us. Kate Bell. Convicted Finchley. 17th of January, 1831. Five years. Released into custody. Uh, and which, uh, hmm? oh, uh, Samuel da. and uh, uh, Furbeck. Uh, you say she, uh, the surgeon's eye. Aye, the devil, sir. Well, tell me what happened. Well, he was a uh, surgeon on the prison ship. He fancied her. He took a liberty with her and she clawed his face. Who with the eye, jumped the socket like an egg from a hen, so they say. He had her flogged. 25, then 50. Uh, since she's been here, she's had 50 regular. I've carried her. Blood spurting from the shoes where she walked. And she's carrying away pieces of her. Now, when a man is blinded by want of a woman, he's a devil. Where are you taking her, sir? Oh. in a year on the chain gang. Four convicts. Took three of them to Alder. Oh, God. Well, that's when he locked her up. Keep her out of temptation, he said.
over, Kate. You're free. We'll camp here. Try and get some sleep. Tomorrow we'll go home. There'll be nothing more to fear. I promise. Letter girl, the devil you have. It was signed by the Lieutenant Governor. Any comfort. So your prisoner is slowly. Eh? <laughs> this is my affair, sir. You kindly not. An affair no longer, it seems. A protracted courtship, if ever there was. Yeah, was not to show fight, but loss of faith. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come, come, all there's plenty more fish in the sea. <laughs> uh, more important things to worry about. That's and... quite a fellow. <laughs> Won a lot of support today, didn't he? Yes. They say you've been invited to the governor's table. Mm, a squatter, if you please. Well, if he's not stopped, we'll all be ruined, gentlemen. What do you say, Hall? Tell the sergeant of the guard that girl is to be brought back. I don't care how long it takes. I want her back. We must go. Don't be afraid. You'll get hung for this. What? Helping an escaped convict. She's an assigned servant. Assigned? To a vagrant? You'd be advised not to insult me. Let's have a look at your papers. You know very well I don't have any. There's any. There'll be papers for her. I don't have them with me. <laughs> no. You're coming with me. <laughs> Tie him up! You dare. I'm a free settler. You'll swing from a gibbet as free as the next. Time to an horse. And tie her hands. I'll carry no scars from you, my beauty. So you carry none from me. <laughs> oh, still or I'll break your arm then. Hold one of you. Hold it. Come on. That's better. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll move the bastard oh, right, along. Come on, you. Hit him. Oh. Always.
father, my father's Jason Furvey. He's at the end. Bring him here. There'll, there'll be a shilling for your pains. Jason Furvey. Tell him, tell him I'm here. It's a hundred lashes for soldiers who take bribes. Where's Kate? Why don't you forget her? Leave her here with me. Never. I let you go. Say I didn't catch you. She's a fancy piece. Suit me fine. I'll see you on the triangle. You're rotten. Right, I'll uh, take the girl over to the surgeon's hall's house, sir. Orders. <laughs> Sir? Nothing. About your business, Sergeant. What about the fella? What fella? The prisoner, Sergeant. Furbeck. Furbeck? That's what he said. Sir. You've detained Furbeck? Helping an escaped convict. Sir. Helping her escape him. Jason Furbeck abducts a female convict. I'm begging your pardon, sir. He said his name was Samuel. You'll say nothing, do you hear? Nothing. Take the girl to my house. But I think we ought to... Do as I tell you. See that dolt's put under lock and key. He's to speak to no one. Right, sir. We can solitary should improve his memory for names. Yes, sir. Furbeck. One dines with the governor, the other with rats in my jail. <laughs> The mischief the squatters do is incalculable. So what do you propose we do? Would a circle drawn in the sand confine the wandering tribes of Asia? <laughs> the westward march is a fact, gentlemen. We have to accept it. The land should be held for legitimate claimants. Yeah, yeah. Recognize the squatter, and you will be rewarding him for breaking the law. Exactly. We cannot accept men who harbor runaway convicts, who steal the sheep from our pastures. I protest, sir. But these are facts, Excellency. They entice our labor. They shelter and feed bush rangers, sell grog on the sly. Their yes, sins are common to the entire colony. But not, I pray you believe, the entire population. There's good and bad in us all, Reverend, within the 19 counties and beyond. Thank you, sir. And no one doubts what the great landowners have done. You, Lawson, Bartlett, Jennings. It's time we look forward. Men who risk their lives opening up the interior cannot forever be branded as outlaws, except the facts, Bartlett. That your protege, Elliot, has married into a family of these outlaws. Yes, if you will excuse me. Yes, of course. Well, I hope, Furbeck, when I have the committee's report, you'll make the journey to advise us again. An honor, sir. So the law requires the not insignificant weight of the church. To support it, Oh, wait down. <laughs> <laughs> it seems the Furbeck name plagues us in committee and at the governor's table. His Excellency thinks very highly of him. Less so in the future, I think. Is this evening lodged against him, gentlemen? A grave charge. Immorality, indecency, abduction. Behavior not becoming a gentleman. Accepted only among the scum that peoples our colony. Disgraces the name of all. What? Uh, what are you talking about, Howard? Come to the point. The point? Here, sir, is the point. The point is, sir, uh, that we can destroy Furbeck. Kate. Not unfamiliar to you, no! Captain General. You shall have the pleasure of laying the charges. No! I made it clear. If she speaks the truth, the court will view her attempt at escape with leniency. We are your friends, Kate. Kate? Kate? We are your friends and wish to help you. Speak the truth and you will have nothing to fear.
Can we hear the submission? Yes, sir. The first and principal witness, sir, is a non-commissioned officer for whose duty and sense of honor I can vouch. Thank you, Major. He will give his evidence on oath, will he not? He is of excellent character, sir. He has been with the service 11 years and has not before been convicted of perjury or disrespect to a court of law. Uh, perhaps you'd tell us what happened. Yes, sir. Your Honor, sir. I was patrolling and I came across a Furbeck gentleman and a lady, sir. As I was far from habitation and it was the early morning, I concluded, you might say, they'd spent the night in each other's company, sir. Begging your pardon, sir. Yes. That is all. I apprehended them, sir. Perhaps you tell the court again the name of the man you apprehended. Mr. Furbeck, sir. The lady was a convict girl, was she not? Helpless at the mercy of this man. Yes, sir. The girl, I say, made a complaint to you? If I may save the court's time. She told the Corporal Furbeck had interfered with her, had threatened her, and made improper suggestions. And welcome advances which she resisted, may I add, with courage and honor. That is the case? It is, sir. Is Mr. Furbeck present? It will take days to apprehend him, sir. He is a squatter. This is merely an inquiry. Furbeck's not on trial. Quite so. The uh, convict girl, uh, bring her here. <laughs> Step forward. There's nothing to worry about, child. Are you a Christian? Yes. You must take an oath. Do you know what that means? Take the Bible in your right hand and say after me, I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth. Speak clearly, my dear. You're a my friend. <sighs> And nothing but the truth. You are Kate, the convict girl? Yes. Tell us what happened. He gave me no cause but to be grateful to him. You say he did not act improperly towards you? No. You're under oath, child. You lodged a complaint with my corporal. No! Come now, child. Do you seriously expect us to believe your word? The word of a transported felon beyond that of a soldier serving in the army of his majesty? You told him Mr. Furbeck had taken liberties. No. Did you not tell him Mr. Furbeck forced you to comply with his wishes? No, never. Forced you to the ground. No, that he pulled no, up no, your petticoats. No. Mr. Furbeck is a gentleman. pretty face I've seen for a month. <laughs> you tease me, sir. Oh, oh. Was I not saying how lacking in graces are the ladies of Parramatta? He spoke of nothing else, Anna, I assure you. <laughs> Samuel will have told you the same. Samuel hasn't come by. I thought he would have been with you. Not well, come by. But he left before us by a day, perhaps, too. We would have seen his camp if we had passed him. I'll have to go back. Someone must have seen him. Oh, no. I'll have a little refreshment. Then I'll tell you what the governor said about you. Oh, please, and you, Mr. Furbeck? You'll stay with us until there's some news. Unless you would prefer a room at the inn. <laughs> no, indeed, Anna. Thank you. Your hospitality will be vastly preferable. Good. Come along. Father will be pleased. I 
I've already told you. Mr. Furbeck gave me no cause to complain. And I tell the court she is lying. Well, you heard my corporal. Do you know what befalls liars before this court? You are on oath. I'm telling the truth. He forced you to the ground, lifted your petticoats, no, and you lodged no, a complaint no, with the corporal. No. It is not so. Did you not run after him and tell him that you had suffered at Furbeck's ungentlemanly commands? No, sir, I did not. Indeed, it was at the hands of your soldiers that I suffered. A new story. We are to hear yet another complaint, are we? Is one not enough that you now wish to implicate another? Or perhaps you would have us believe that you are irresistible to all men. No. No, indeed. You would like us to believe, would you not, my child, that although you spent the night alone with the man called Thurbeck, a passionate man, as we all know who have heard him, a hot, still night, alone, nothing, nothing happened at all? Upon my oath, sir! Careful, child. You speak falsely on oath. Mr. Blaspheme. Find the charge against Jason Furbeck proven. And Kate Bell, stand up. Kate Bell, the bench finds you guilty of willful and corrupt perjury. You will therefore be taken hence and committed to His Majesty's jail and be held there until an opportunity affords itself for you to be banished to Fort Macquarie, where you will remain for the rest of your life. I spoke the truth. I spoke the truth. Oh, take her away. You said you were my friends. I spoke the truth. Thank <laughs> you. 
Won't be me, you see. Nobody lays a finger on Bailey. You know who it is? Furbeck. And the bell girl. Bell? Kate Bell? Kate Bell, damn right. Bet you'd know Bailey's a man. Would it too if it hadn't been for one eye?
How far is the governor's house? Two minutes. Just round the side. You've been a good friend. Kate will remember you. Kate, we all be well with you. Show us the way and I'll put in a word with the governor for you. Well, damn it, Howard, a pretty disreputable tale. What do you say to it? Extraordinary, Your Excellency. I'll make inquiries. Hmm, this damn conspiracy here. I'll have none of it. Your next inquiry, Howard, would well be less partial than your last. Whoever's at fault will be run from the colony. Do you understand? Yes, Excellency. Yeah. The magistrates are suspended. The Deputy Surgeon General, I understand... Perhaps a um, passage to England, sir? Yes, I think so. You will have safe conduct to your home, wherever it may be. Uh, see that your father hears of my regret that you've been so mistreated and my pleasure at the outcome. Thank you, Your Excellency. And you, my child, I shall grant you a pardon. Uh, stay with the Furbecks, they are good people. But you are free of all punishment and may go as you please. As far as the border, Edward, in Luke's kingdom, we're safe. We have no gentlemen there. Trooper, dismissed. <laughs> 